Hello everybody and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video what I'm going to be doing is reviewing slash reacting to an old Python project of mine. Now this is a project I made in grade 11 and this is actually the first ever real Python project of mine. What I mean by real is it's the first one that I was kind of proud of, it was the first one that I really put a lot of effort into and that was kind of past like four or five hundred lines. So actually something that took more than just a few days, this took a few weeks and maybe actually even about a month to make. So keep in mind I did this when I was about 16, 17 and the reason I'm reviewing this is because I know that I made so many horrible mistakes in the code base and I think it's going to be kind of funny to go back and look at how much I've changed since then and then point out some of those mistakes and uh, hopefully by doing that you guys can look at a few mistakes that uh, you should not make when you're programming. So with that being said, let me actually go ahead and do a quick demo of this game, and then after that we'll get into the uh, the code review. So this is the game, it's called Super Mini Golf, and this is largely inspired by a game on the App Store called Super Stickman Golf. I used to play this game all the time with my friends at lunch, probably in grade 11 and grade 12, and well that's why it kind of inspired me to make this, I wanted to recreate my own version of it on the computer. Alright, so I'm in the game now, I'm not sure if you guys can hear the sound effects, I have them kind of faintly paying in the playing in the background, but there is some music and sound effects when you do specific things in this game, and the first thing I'll show you is actually the ball shop. Now, I won't spend too much time on it, but here you can equip different balls, uh, so you can, the kind of the objective is you collect coins, and then you can purchase different balls, and you can see I can equip, let's say, like the aqua one here, so I'll use that one if I wanted to purchase one, I could select it, it will bring up this window, and then I can press yes or no. So let's actually get into the game, I'll start my first level, we can see we go to level 1, and I'll just play through level 1 so you guys get an idea of kind of how the physics work and the bounces, and then I'm going to skip through a few of them and show you some of the later levels, because those ones are kind of cool. So immediately you'll notice there's kind of a power bar in that bottom left hand corner, and to shoot the ball it's just all with the mouse, uh, you press down once, starts the power, press again, it locks the power, and then it shoots. You aim by just moving the mouse around, you can go close, far, it doesn't matter, and then there's power ups, so there's power shot, mulligan, and sticky ball, those are the power ups that you can use. So you'll notice that here there's actually this pink or purpley kind of substance on the wall, and that is a sticky pad, so if you hit that you actually stick to it. And then this laser is, laser is another hazard, so if you run into it, you lose a stroke. Now I'm just going to skip through all the levels and get to kind of the end screen here, just to show you what that looks like. Uh, but again, a really cool game. I made all these levels myself, a little bit of inspiration from that original game. But you'll see when we get to the code review how difficult it was to actually kind of design these levels. Even though it is this little 2D thing, there's all these different objects we have to check for collision with. And well, it gets pretty complicated pretty fast. And let's go, and it says new best, course completed, 40, uh, 14 strokes, par 40, score negative 26, coins collected to press the mouse to continue, and that is the game demo. So let's go ahead and get into the code review after a quick word from our sponsor. I need to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring this video and introduce you to the machine learning certification course. This course incorporates 58 hours of self-paced learning, live virtual classes, and 24-7 teaching assistance, all in combination with a high engagement online classroom environment. This job-oriented training focuses on preparing you for the real world and giving you lots of hands-on experience. You'll work with real-time data, you'll develop and analyze algorithms, and learn in-demand machine learning skills like time series modeling, decision trees, unsupervised learning, k-means clustering, deep learning, and much more. You'll master these skills through hands-on exercises, four real-life industry projects, and integrated labs. After completion of this course, you will receive a certificate from Simply Learn to testify to your skills in machine learning. Get started today by hitting the link in the description. Alright, so now we're on to the code review, which is going to be very interesting because I do not remember exactly how I wrote this code. So it's going to be, yeah, interesting to say the least on how I'm actually going to understand what's going on in here. I'll try my best to explain it. But again, this was three, four years ago, so God knows if I'm going to remember what happened in here. Anyways, we can see that I have four Python files here. So I have courses.py, main.py, physics.py, and start screen.py. This is where all the code's written. I did not organize things all nicely into different classes and with a structure, which I probably should have done because you're going to see that main.py is like a few thousand lines of code. And then I have venv, so this is just the Python virtual environment. I have sounds, at least I put all of the sounds in their own folder. So there is actually music and sound effects for the game, but I can't play them just because I don't know if they're copyright or not, so I don't want to, uh, to risk that. And then images, these are all the images of all the different things in there. So like the icon, um, like the laser, there was some other levels where I added some more things that we didn't see. Um, the power bar, 
uh, sand, the title, right, water, all these different things. So that is all the images. And now let's actually just get started on, uh, let's keep the smaller module first. So this is the physics module. So as you noticed, all of the stuff in this game actually worked off of like pretty realistic physics. Like the bounce was working pretty good. Um, flying through the air was working pretty well. And this is based strictly off of projectile motion, which you learn in grade 11. So since I actually knew projectile motion, because I was pretty good at physics in high school, I was able to actually implement a fairly realistic kind of physics simulator that I wrote from scratch. I didn't use any module or anything from this. And this was the main kind of I don't know, module or brains behind the physics. So ball paths, we have a start X, a start Y, a power and an angle and the amount of time. And this simply calculates at what like what coordinate this ball should be at, given it started at this X, that Y, had a power, angle, and time. And then of course, gravity is built in at negative 9.8 meters per second, which I probably should have changed that, but it actually ended up working fairly well for this project. So you can see this is the ball path. That's what that function does find power this just finds the amount of power based on where that line was on the power meter because that angle uh, the angle off the line determines how much power you're going to shoot with so i had to figure that out in here uh find angle i don't actually know what that does i don't remember and then max time don't remember what that does either but those were this is like the physics module and now i'll go into main.py and then i'll talk about the other ones so main.py let me just scroll through here is what is it oh yeah so it's a thousand lines of code so i exaggerated a bit but it is a significant amount of code considering none of it's like broken up into functions at all it's just this massive massive wow statement oh, there's two so there's one for the start screen and then there's one that just boom for the entire main game loop so you can imagine that like if i want to fix anything oh my god this is going to be like literally impossible trying to figure out where anything is because there's like elif 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 everywhere so not the most readable thing we'll start from the top to bottom and then we'll keep going all right so i load up all the stuff i'm i'm fine with this all these images i probably would have made these capitals um as their constants but that's fine we have our global variables here yeah i didn't put anything in classes this was all like this is a very functional um what is it very functional program if you want to put it that way uh and yeah so loading all the music power up variables fonts and there is one class i guess i wrote which is the score sheet so let's have a look at this all right so self par with two r's nice okay um self dot par list par i'm not seeing anything that's like hurting my head too horribly ah except for these just massive methods so draw sheet I mean, I'm okay with this, but I really don't like seeing huge blocks of code where they're definitely doing more than one thing. And like, that's the huge thing with this, this program here is there's just this huge blocks and just chunks of code. And I, I can't immediately tell you what all of these things are doing. And, and these kind of things should probably have gone in their own method at least. So they would have been easier to change and, and mess around. Although I did add some decent comments. So setup grid, uh, column lines, rows, display all headers for rows. So at least I did that. So that's not horrible. Catch the index out of range error, display strokes each level. Mm, try catch. I don't know why I needed that, but I guess I did. And then we go down to error. So this is uh, displays an error message if you try to buy. Yeah, out of power ups, you have no more power ups remaining for this course. Okay, so that's what that does end screen this is what handles the main loop for the end screen again right like just all this code oh my god uh rewrite the text file containing the scores draw all the stuff on the screen i should have put that in its own function global variables ah ah we don't want to do that do we but a bunch of global variables so obviously nothing in this project we can take out and reuse it's all just now completely tied together there's no chance that we can even take small sections of this other than the physics module and, and move it anywhere so that's an absolute mess uh old score old coins file okay um i am noticing that when i name variables i'm not doing camel case or underscores i'm just doing if you guys can see here uh, the actual name which is not usually a good thing to be doing i have a lot of like one letter variable names which just make it really hard to read like f l wouldn't be doing that anymore co like i have no idea what co stands for and i probably could have named that something more descriptive um wait okay uh while loop for event yeah, like just a lot of stuff that just doesn't make any sense when you come back and read it, which is obviously something you want to avoid. And then this just massive diagonal code indentation levels. So let's try to decipher some of this setup level. Okay, maybe that makes sense. Starting 
shop click okay so this is handling the main menu it looks like potentially anyways setup what does this do setup setup objects for the level from module courses okay so now what i'm going to do is go to courses and show you how i actually built these courses so notice that i had like all the lines there and i had these just notice what the levels looked like there was platforms and there was like a sand trap and there was a flag well you're going to see how i decided to do that <laughs> so this is courses.py um yeah just just here you guys can just just look so what i actually did is i defined objects by strings so like a floor was denoted by floor and that corresponds to the image here which is where is it do we have a floor somewhere platform floor green icon laser power tile title water sticky sand edge sand bottom so sand bottom potentially i don't know there's something that was a floor like something is a floor one of the images anyways so if we go back to courses.py though you can see that I denote what the object was by string and then I put the position that I want it to be at. So 0, negative 8, 1224. Okay, so I believe what I'm saying here is the, uh, this is going to be the X, I believe this is the Y, and I believe this is how long and how high it is. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So this is X, Y, width, height. That's what I'm defining here. And you can see I've hard-coded window width and window height up here, which is just not a good thing to do. And I'm using those variables up here. So no, you cannot change the window height and the width. And I literally went in and manually added all of the objects rather than building some kind of like level builder or something, which probably would have been easier. And then I put all of them in a list uh, for the courses. So course one is denoted by just all of this. And if you want to move anything, well, have fun trying to figure out where they are and, and what is what. Uh, I have these functions in here that are meant to just help get you like a few things from these levels. So they get you the par, they get you um, whatever, like whatever else is here, get start. Oh, getting the start position, that's because inside of all of these, I have something that's labeled start, I believe. Well, let's see if there's anything called start. Uh, oh, maybe not. Uh, but there's like there's some way that we define like where people start and where the green is and where the flags are and all of that. But that's just a mess. That's courses.py. Um, yeah. And so setup, I guess, is is handling some of that. The courses.py, I couldn't even tell you. And then I have some other functions here. So fade, fade up the screen when player gets hit by ball. Show score, display the score from the class score sheet. So these are okay. I'm actually okay with some of these functions. I can live with these. Hole in one, uh, if a player gets a hole in one, display a special message of screen. Okay, that's fine. I can do that. Ah, display stroke. Okay, so this is um, based on what you get versus the par. It gives you all of the, uh, the names, right? So like... I didn't even know what these were what things albatross negative four skipped eagle birdie par bogey double bogey triple bogey so on and then plus whatever uh, that's okay redraw window this is meant to handle all the redrawing so this actually uses that courses you can see I have sand water edge bottom flag floor green wall laser sticky coin and then of course there's a ball somewhere that I'm drawing although I don't know where it is, but essentially I just load in a list of objects and then draw all of them based on what string they have using the correct image. So that's how this draw thing works. I mean, I couldn't really come up with a better way to do that. Now I probably would, but that's how I went about doing it. Coin image, this calculates the spinning coin, so how it spins. Power bar, this handles that power bar moving back and forth. Find angle, I think, is a duplicate of something else. Oh, no, find the angle that the ball hits the ground at. So good I have that comment. But that's actually pretty hard to do if you think about it. Like, you have this ball, which is a circular object, first of all, that's coming down. And then you got to figure out what angle it hits at so you can bounce off at the corresponding angle and then reduce power um, accordingly. So that's interesting. On green, this tells us if we're on the green. Because if we're on the green, you go into putting mode. So we need to know if that's true over hole this tells us if the ball is over the hole so that we know if it went in or not so that's interesting uh and now yeah we get into this main game loop collision of ball uh <laughs> looking angle locking angle and power checking if power up buttons are clicked shooting the ball using physics module keeping track of strokes and calls all functions and uses module slash classes important to find above yeah so like we should not do all of that in one area which is what i did but you can see that like this is just an absolute mess so this is the screen the start screen sorry and what do i do start screen dot main screen so i believe if i go to start screen um ball so class ball okay interesting i didn't even 
use a capital there and where's the start screen somewhere in here main screen so I believe that displays some stuff mouse over like there's just so much code it's hard to wrap my head around all of it now but draw shop oh my gosh <laughs> Just, whenever you see these cascading if statements it just can never be a good thing and I just yeah I'm not I'm gonna skip that anyways let's go back here so display start screen okay and so we let's say this start screen works we get past that now we get into like the core of this is the most difficult part by far this main loop which actually handles all the physics so first of all this is handling all the power-ups so depending on which one you hit uh, do something right and I don't even know what all these X for like what is X I don't I don't know what that is um, I shouldn't have used one letter variable names for, for X in power-up buttons yeah, this is just so interesting. I don't, I don't know what those are. Uh, event dot type. So this is if you press the uh, mouse button down, we can see that this is checking the collision of the power up buttons, and then this is clicking. Uh, if you click the power up buttons but you don't lock the angle, then it doesn't work. So you have to actually lock the angle first. If we haven't locked power, stay in this loop until we do. So this is waiting for you to actually lock the power for that arm to spit. Uh, to go back and forth change the position of the angle line so this is uh, mouse motion what the heck oh so that's based on if I move my mouse left or right that changes how that power bar moves so that's there's a lot of complicated stuff here redraw window great and now another while loop so while putt and not shoot so if you're putting but we aren't in the shooting mode yet and if we aren't over the hole then do this otherwise do all of this right so you can just see that this is a mess like at least i commented it so i can read it but it's just so many things happening in one place and so many horrible names and inconsistency like i'm using camel case here but then i use snake case other places and then i have um just s like that with no camel case at all all these random constants throwing up like just these magic numbers everywhere like pi game dot time dot delay 20 like why 20 why did i pick 20 i have no idea uh, while shoot so while we're in the shooting mode so now this is responsible for actually moving the ball which is oh my gosh yeah collision loop very complex <laughs> I love how I, I stated that so if as if everything else wasn't to fix glitch where you go through walls and floors great right like this is these are my solutions to common problems <laughs> to just comment in all capitals this fixes the glitch don't remove it leave it there okay collision loop very complex all angles are in radians physics are in gen in general real and correct that's actually true I know I did a decent job on the physics and oh my god so if I4 equals coin so if we collided with a coin uh, then check if we collided and do this uh, if we collided with a laser check the exact same thing we did up here except with the laser and do all of this if we collided with water then do all of this where I'm sure like most of this is the same stuff that I've just repeated like in all of these loops if we hit the flag or we hit the coin do all of this and recalculate the angles and all of that it's just so much reused and repetitive code and it just makes it like we can see here literally impossible to understand at all so honestly with that I feel like I've probably dragged this video on long enough I could go through and review this for like hours uh, and talk about it but I just wanted to to show you guys that what a, my first kind of real Python project looked like um, an absolute mess no idea of design practices I used like one class or two classes inside of here I had no idea the proper way to do this and I just jumped into this huge project with no real planning and well you can see that it just turned into something that's really cool that I'm definitely still proud of that I was able to create but just an absolute colossal mess and this should show you why it's hopefully important that you're applying good practices when you're coding so that if you want to look back at a project in two years you have some idea what the heck is going on so anyways with that being said I hope you all enjoyed if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and let me know what you thought of my first Python project